Claire had an abusive partner. His coercive control, intimidation and physical abuse of their children made her feel like she was walking on eggshells. When Claire left with her three children, she hoped it would mean leaving the trauma behind too, but it continued through her son's intense meltdowns. He would seem to kind of just go from zero to a hundred straight away, within a second. He would become quite violent. He would throw things, kick things, people. It was like his whole body was just completely out of control. We've changed the mother's name and voice to protect her family. Over the course of five years, Claire tried desperately to help her child, who was seven years old when they left. The meltdowns had significant impacts on the family's day-to-day -day life, as Claire tried to keep all her children safe. The meltdowns were physical, and the family's rental property sometimes bore the brunt, with holes kicked in walls and rocks thrown at windows. They happened in public too. I was trying to de-escalate him having a meltdown in public and this stranger came up to me and said, that boy needs a beating. I was in shock. I wanted to say he already had one and that's why this is happening. Claire sought help, trying psychologists, NDIS and family support workers, even police. But the help she found consistently failed to provide specialised trauma-informed advice, instead suggesting mainstream techniques like sticker charts. One GP even told her that she needed to assert her authority over her son and could try holding him underwater to snap him out of it. Finally, Claire was referred to the Australian Childhood Foundation, a specialised service helping children to recover from abuse, neglect and family violence. They were amazing. I finally felt like they saw our family for what it was and they supported me and the children. It felt like full wraparound support like what we actually needed the day we left. Play therapy is used to help process trauma in an age-appropriate way, using toys or art to express, regulate and communicate. The Foundation's CEO said it was common to see children who'd experienced violence or abuse in the home struggle at school and communicate big feelings through their behaviour. They're trying to tell us something and if we understand the meaning behind the behaviour, Rather than just respond to the behaviour itself, we will get to the bottom of what this child needs. Ms Mitchell said as children were supported, they began to smile and laugh and have fun again. And that's representative of the fact that they're feeling safe and supported, that they're feeling connected to the important adults in their life and that the, the impact of the violence in their lived experience each and every day is starting to become less and less significant and you can see them becoming children again. As demand for support services like the Australian Children Foundation outstrips supply, Claire wants people to understand the ongoing impacts of trauma. It's really important that children who survive and the parents who survive aren't forgotten after the point of leaving. Selena Ross, ABC News. And if you or someone you know needs help, you can contact 1800RESPECT or Kids Helpline by phone or their website.